word You calm the storm that surrounds me With just one word Darkness has to retreat Just one touch I feel the presence of heaven Just one touch My eyes are open to see My heart can't help but believe There's nothing that our God can't do There's not a mountain Just one touch, I feel the power of heaven. Yeah, just one touch, my eyes are open to see. My heart can't help but believe. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a mountain that He can't move. Oh, praise Him. Same God in 
never fails, will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out, working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high, lift the Oh. 
Things change, chains break, we're free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Chains fall, fear bow, hear now. Jesus, you change everything. Come on, would you give him a big praise this morning? Come on, if you believe that Jesus changes things, give him a big praise this morning. Your Bible tells you in 1 John 4 and verse 18 that God's love for us casts out all fear. Perfect love, that word perfect is a Greek word teleos. It means mature, complete, mature or completed love casts out. That word cast is balo. It means throw out. Perfect, completed, mature love throws out fear from your life. God wants to flush the fear out of your life. A lot of folks dealing with a lot of fear. God has not given you a spirit of fear, 2 Timothy 1, 7, but of power and love and of a sound mind. May I challenge you this morning? If you want to throw fear out of your life or flush it out of your life, immerse yourself in the love of God. Get into the scriptures that tell you how much God loves you because it's his love that flushes out all fear out of your life. A lot of folks dealing with fear. Immerse yourself in those scriptures. Jeremiah 31 and verse 3 where the Bible says that God loves you with an everlasting love. Uh, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 37 that you are more than a conqueror through him that loves you. Romans 8, 35, nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. His love flushes out, casts out, throws out all fear. Ephesians chapter 3, 15 through 20, that you and I ought to be rooted and grounded in the love of God. The love of God should be our foundation. It's easy to trust someone who loves you more than you've ever been loved in your life, and that is God the Father. Come on, give him a good praise this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father God, we praise you. And 1 John 4, 19, we love you because you first loved us. You can be seated in the house. Good news this morning. Honored to have you worshiping with us live and live on stream as well. Such a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord together with the people of God on such a beautiful day. Can we give God a big thanks? If you are brand new here at Joy or watching us for the very first time online, I do want you to know just a little bit about us uh, before we get started. Here at Joy Church, we are not religious. That's not what we're about. Always about a relationship with a loving Heavenly Father through his one son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Here at Joy Church, not about tradition, always about the word of God 
And at Joy Church, we do not want to just simply endure our Christian life. Me and Riley know we want to enjoy. You and I can and we should enjoy our Christian journey together. Got a little piece of good news for you. Very excited about this. As you know, we have a pantry in which we serve folks that are hurting. Uh, every Thursday and Friday last year, we fed about 68 thousand dollars worth of groceries to the hurting in this area and last friday we had a really neat time there were two people that gave their lives to jesus christ one with a very high muslim background and another one who was an agnostic jesus is working right here in the area how many know we count souls because souls count they are the most important thing to God. I'm going to ask Pastor Rob. He's going to come and officially welcome you here this morning. As he comes, can you encourage our very favorite youth pastor? <laughs> hey, welcome everybody. Welcome everybody here. Welcome everybody online. We love the chance to get to serve you and connect with you. We cannot wait to get into the new series. You're going to be so encouraged. We can't wait to serve you in that capacity. The thing we need to do right now, this is what we do, is we love to take a moment to make sure we welcome anybody who's here with us today for the very first time. We want you to feel so welcome. It's our privilege that you came. We want you to feel like family. We got a packet for you right now with a gift inside. You also notice there's a card in there. If you take about 30 seconds to fill the card out, that's just how we feel like we can best serve you in this season. So if you are our first time guest and you would like one of those packets, if you'd be so kind as to raise your hand for us, we would love to serve you at this time. Church, can you let our guests know we love that they're here? Again, thank you for coming to be with us. If you are our guest and you raise your hand, just keep it in the air long enough. Our ushers are on their way to you. We'd love to take care of you. The other thing we want to do is after service, right after service, we have for you as our first time guest, we've got a reception set up. This is just a chance for us to hang out. We love to hang out. We love to connect. Now, we will be honoring physical distancing guidelines while we're all together back there, but we would love the chance to get to connect. And so if you got some time afterward, come hang out with us. We will remind you about that here in a little bit. So the only thing you need to be concerned with right now is just sit back. Let us serve you through the ministry of the word. We'll do that in just a moment. Now, the, real quick, the other thing, though, we want to make sure everybody knows, everybody in-house, everybody online, we've got some great stuff coming up that all of us can be a part of. Things are opening up. We're grateful for that. Things that we can enjoy, connect with other people, make a difference. A lot of things coming up that you can easily get connected with and be a part of. So as always, got a video prepared with those details. Check it out, and we'll be right back. Hey, Joy Church, don't forget to come out this Wednesday as Pastor continues his awesome series in Proverbs. We are so excited to be bringing back our taste of joy. This is going to be a catered meal right here at Joy Church. This is an awesome way for you to connect with our staff, learn a little bit more about the church, where we're going, where we've been, where you can fit in. For more information, just go to joychurch.net and click on the events tab. You'll find all the information you need and to get signed up right there. Is your heart resonating with the vision here? Are you excited about joining us in making a difference for the Lord? Then Step Into Joy is just for you. If you've already missed session one, don't worry. We'll get you caught up in session two because it's like Pastor Jim says, when you step out of your comfort zone, you step into your purpose. So visit our friends out at the guest services desk or see an usher to get more information about stepping into your purpose as you step in to joy. Hey, Joy Church, don't forget to get signed up for our spring 2021 WCBI trimester. That's World Changers Bible Institute. Our Tuesday class is how to discover and fulfill God's will for your life. If you want to dig in deeper to God's word and learn how you can take your next step to your destiny, this is a great class for you. That starts Tuesday, March 23rd. Our Thursday class is financial freedom putting God first in your finances. Come out and learn biblical financial principles that you can apply to your life today. That starts Thursday, March 25th. To register today, just go to our website, joychurch.net forward slash events, or visit our friends at the guest services desk. 
Have you heard about the food pantry ministry here at Joy? Every week we're helping to serve those in our community who need food assistance and we're sharing the love of Jesus. You can make a difference by donating non-perishable food 30 minutes before each service at the food pantry in the landing or drop it off at the office during office hours. Go to guest services for a complete shopping list. We deeply appreciate your continued support of the food pantry ministry here at Joy. Lives are being changed. We are so excited to announce that we will be having four services on Easter weekend. That's right. That's four times the joy. Saturday at 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. Then Sunday at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. We look forward to celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus with you and your family this Easter. So come celebrate. Celebrate Easter with joy. Hey, we love this stuff is opening up, and we get to make a difference together, man. There's so much to be thankful for. We look forward to getting to connect with you. So any info you need on what you just saw or to get signed up, you can go check out our website, joychurch.net, or check in with guest services in our connections table. They will take care of you. Now, you know the other thing we do at this time is we take just a moment to remember what God has given us the privilege to get to do. You heard Pastor start out right after praise and worship talking about the food pantry. You heard Pastor James in the video talking about the food pantry. We have the privilege as a church to not just sit back and see people suffer. We're literally getting to serve them with hundreds of dollars worth of food, thousands of dollars worth of food, as you heard Pastor Jim mention over last year, thousands. And we're getting to serve so many people but then as we serve them with tangible goods, we're able to then introduce them to Jesus. Do you realize people's lives are being changed about 100 feet from here in a pantry area? You're a part of that every time you give to this church. Don't ever think God's not using you. God is actually using you in this church to minister not only here, but all over this country and all over this world. We shared recently about the ministry we get to support in Honduras, that in the midst of all the challenges, they're meeting so many needs, but over 700 people gave their life to Jesus Christ last year alone. You're a part of this. From that seat where you're sitting and through the challenges you walk through, every time you give tithes and offerings here, you are impacting this world for Jesus. And you can't forget that in the midst of discouraging times. God is using you. That's why we want to encourage all of us, don't get discouraged. Let's lean in more. Let's trust God with tithes and offerings, and let's see what he can do in 2021 and beyond as he uses us. See, Malachi 3 to us as believers, we love to bring tithes and offerings. We know open windows of heaven are, are available to us. We know he's taking care of us. That's why we do that by faith. But then that's what God uses to minister to people, to get the gospel out and meet people's needs all over this world. We are so greatly privileged that's why we want to encourage everybody, keep up your generosity. You're doing amazing. That's why we've made giving here so simple. To our online family, if you're watching the live stream on the web page, there's a give button on the screen. Or there's joychurch.net forward slash give. Super simple instructions on both of those to help with the giving process. Then, of course, you can always mail it to the P.O. Box address that's on your screen right now. Everybody in-house, you're welcome to use the online options if that's your preference. That's available not only now, that's day and night all the time if you want to use that route. But then if you want to give in person, our offering buckets are available in the back of the auditorium and overflow room as you exit. You can give in person. That is an option we have available as well. But as we take these moments, let's prepare our tithes and offerings. Let's just remember. Remember God's word to you. Remember that you're not alone. Remember that he is using you through tithes and offerings to impact this world. We should have so much courage and expectation for this year. God made his promises. He will always fulfill them. Lives are being changed. So remember that as we pray. God, we thank you. We remember that on purpose right now. We take these moments to celebrate and to say thank you and that you got good things in store for us and we look forward to them. We thank you, God, for the fulfilling of your word to us. And God, we hunger to see these tithes and offerings be turned into the changing of lives. We know people are challenged and they're, they're walking through tough times, but we want to be a part of what you're doing, to see them coming to a real relationship with you and their lives turned around. We thank you for this, God. In Jesus' name, amen.
surely it was through Since when has impossible ever stopped you? Friday's disappointment Sunday's empty tomb since when has impossible ever stopped you? This is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is a praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound the dry bones rattling yeah in the cost of fire the stir is something new you're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon yeah resurrection power
Come on, give your God a better thanks. Come on. Now somebody encourage the praise team, make them feel special. Now somebody save the rest of that clapping for after my message. Never one time have I preached a message in this house when you responded that way. I have come to the conclusion that you people are here for the singing and you put up with the preaching. And I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm okay with it. Your Bible tells you in Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 7, that's an actual scripture. That's not, how many know that's not him 101? How, how many are glad that's not him 101? But that comes from an actual scripture, Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 7, where God says to the prophet Ezekiel, prophesy over these dry bones. And he did. And the Bible says there was a sound and the bones began to rattle. And he prophesied over them live. And it was a prophecy about the return of Israel. That was literally the prophecy. And that, of course, has taken place that began, uh, you know, not too long ago, about 50, 60 years ago. And how many know, ladies and gentlemen, that has a spiritual application to the body of Christ? And may I challenge you, I think that has an application to today, I really do, really almost a prophetic application, that you come out and live again. And, and listen... You know your passion. I'm not going to speak out of emotions. I'm always going to endeavor to speak by the Spirit of God. I'm not, I, I, we're going to be wise and on and on and on. But you cannot live your life around death. That is no life at all. Come out. Live again. And it's so, it's so great. I'm seeing people for the first time I haven't seen them in about a year. And, I, and I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. You're coming out of that grave. And you're not allowing a virus to dictate your joy. Again, I'm not telling you to be unwise or stupid, or I'm not telling you any of the thing of the kind, but I am telling you, you cannot live your life around death. There are worse things than dying, folks. And so let's, let's live again. If you're here and, you're, and your bones are dusty and dry spiritually, I got one word for you, live. Live for the Lord. Come on, give them a big encouragement. So proud of our praise team. How many of you can tell they're getting into that? They're, 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 they're getting into that. I, I love that song, and I love those words. Those words are absolutely scriptural. Uh, very quickly, before we jump into our teaching session, I've got some pastoral announcements that I do need to make. Will you indulge me? You realize it's hard to go from that song to announcements. <laughs> Only I can make that transition, I want you to know. Everybody say, tonight. If you're brand new here, here for the very first time, we are honored to have you. I've met so many of you. I, I'm just so pleased to see you. You just relax. You're our special guest. But if you've been here any length of time and your heart is beginning to resonate towards the vision of the house, the way to get more connected is through what we call our Stepping Into Joy classes. We had class number one last Sunday, but we can get you caught up, no problem. Our ushers are all in the back. They're holding up brochures right now on the way out. Grab an usher. Grab that brochure. Come to tonight's class. Fill that brochure out. Turn it in. We'll help you find your God-given gift, and we'll help you use it here in the local church. This is not ultimately for us. This is ultimately for you, because at some point in your life, you've got to have purpose beyond your pain. Make a difference for the Lord in 2021. Uh, this church is committed to doing that. Just for example, just yesterday, uh, right in the middle of all these crazy times, we've never stopped outreach to this community in any way, shape, or form. We just literally delivered 300 baskets to a community, a local neighborhood very close to us. 300 baskets, thousands of dollars worth of very nice baskets. When we do stuff, we don't do cheap church stuff. I have a hatred towards cheap church stuff. Church has a bad reputation of doing cheap things. Can't stand that. We do things well and with excellence. We represent the kingdom of God well. We gave them all beautiful baskets, thousands of dollars worth of just to bless them. Literally online, there was all kinds of responses 
uh, simply that Joy Church came out and blessed us on Saturday morning. We're all the time doing those kinds of things. Come on, make your life count for God. Be a part of our Stepping Into Joy class. Everybody say this Wednesday. Wednesday at 7, some of our best services. Most churches don't have midweek services. We do. We have live in-person worship treated as an honor. We'll be live streaming as well. Let me talk to you live streaming. If you are live streaming because you live in another country, we understand. <laughs> it's kind of a far drive. We literally have people that watch all from all over, from, from countries all over, from states all over uh, every week, and we understand that. Uh, I, I get it. It's very hard to commute from Hawaii. We have a lot of folks that watch us from Hong Kong. It's very hard to commute from Hong Kong. How many believe that? No question. But if you're here in the area, and if you're dealing with some sort of a, a sickness or whatever, listen, we respect and we want to protect you. If you're there at home for health reasons, we get it. But if you're at home and you're here locally for habit reasons, we want to redirect you to come and worship with us. Live again. I'm really challenging you to do that. Wednesday at 7, some of our best services were in the book of Proverbs, and we are very excited. How many want to get wiser? Uh, how, many could, how, how many could use a lot more wisdom? How many are sitting right now next to a really dumb person that you need to just tell them, come on, you could use a little more wisdom. Don't raise your hand on that. I have one person raised their hand. It's going to be a long, cold night in your house, buddy, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Everybody, everybody say Easter. <laughs> Easter's coming up. I want you to know that. And we're very excited about it. April 3rd, April 4th, huge uh, weekend for us. We've had a, uh, an extra couple of services. We've got Saturday at 5, Saturday at 7, Sunday at 9 and 11. The landing will be open once again. Aren't you glad? I think that's the first time in quite some time. All kinds of beautiful festivities. We're really believing God for lots of folks to give their life to Jesus Christ. Uh, please, there are little invitation cards on the way out, a basket of them. Grab that, hand it out to anybody that moves. People around Easter time will respond to your invitation like never before. Make a difference for the Lord this Easter. Bring somebody to the house. And then starting Tuesday and Thursday, we've got our World Changers Bible Institute classes. You can get as deep into the Bible here as you desire. Tuesday, I'll be teaching my How to Discover and Fulfill the Will of God class. On Thursday, Pastor Dave will be teaching you financial freedom from the Word of God please sign up online or you can sign up here in our guest registration right outside in the foyer. We would love to have you be with us and grow this spring trimester in the things of God. Get deep into the word, make a difference for the Lord, be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. I thank you, Father God, Hebrews 4.12, that your word is alive. I pray, 2 Peter 3.18, that we would all grow in grace and knowledge today as a result of it. And James 1.25, as we hear it and as we do it, our life will be blessed. And I pray it, and I say it in the name of my Lord and best friend Jesus. And if you agree, would you say amen? Super excited uh, to begin a brand new series today. Me and the Smiths are, are jazzed about it. We're entitling this Big Teddy Bear. And I love the subtitle, The Ten Second Prayer That'll Change Your Life. Now, I know you're Americans. I know you're excited about anything that only takes 10 seconds, then it'll change your life. You want something now. You want something fast. I get it. I got it. The problem with the 10 second prayer, it's going to take two Sundays to explain. <laughs> so it will change your life. The prayer won't take long, but the preaching might because you need to have the foundation as a result of it. I'm going to begin this series with a meme that you may have seen on the interwebs here over the last year or two. It's really pretty popular, but it has a pretty powerful meaning, and I, and I love this. You see the little meme there is Jesus, and he's saying, just trust me. He's got that big, giant teddy bear behind his back and that little girl, but I love it. He's, she's got that little raggedy old teddy bear in front of her, and she wants to hold on to that thing for dear life. And listen to me closely, unfortunately, that is so many Christians. 
God has a big teddy bear for you, but so many of us are holding on to our old little raggedy teddy bear, and we won't let go of that for anything. And in the kingdom of God, I want you to understand this life point really exhibits what I'm trying to say throughout this whole series. Check it out. You'll have to give up to go up. That's how it works in the kingdom of God. In order to go up, you've got to give up first, and that give up always precedes the go up. We always want the go up without the give up, but that's not how the kingdom works. If you want the big old teddy bear, you got to relinquish the old little ratty one you got in your hands. And I want you to understand something about your God. Your God, listen to me very closely, is not a taker. He's a giver. He's not trying to take something from you. He's trying to get something to you. He will never be put in the position of a taker. He's a giver. For God so loved the world that he gave. Your God is a giver and always will be. You cannot outgive him. He's not trying to steal that little raggedy teddy bear from you. He's trying to get you a big old teddy bear that you've never had before. But he won't show it to you until you relinquish that little ratty thing that you're clinging on to for all these years. Now, let me kind of explain it with a couple of practical examples. In my life, I try to tell you examples in our life. That way, it takes all the pressure off of you. My lovely wife, uh, she's up on the praise team. Can you encourage her? She leads it. It does such a phenomenal job. We've been married for over 30 years, and I'm telling you right now, the woman loves me. And I love her, too. We don't have a ministry marriage. We have an actual really great marriage. We have to work at it. But I'm going to tell you right now, we love each other. And for over 30 years, we've just had this rich, wonderful marriage. We've had our challenges just like you. You know, she beats me every once in a while, just like your wife does. But I do want you to know we love each other, and I thank God for that. What you don't know was when she was in a Christian college many years ago. Not Well, not that many years ago. Uh, she had a boyfriend, great Christian guy, uh, wonderful man of God. The relationship was fruitful and whole and good, and everything was very good about it and wonderful, and they were in love, and they were thinking about getting married. Matter of fact, moving towards that, but something on the inside of my beautiful wife said, this is not the person that I have for you. And I want you to understand something. She had to let go of that little raggedy teddy bear <laughs> in order to get her. I think you get the picture. I, think, I, think, I, I feel that you're with me in this. Now, the issue was, was this, God never showed her me before he re she relinquished this other guy. And can I be honest with you, that was to my advantage. <laughs> I have a radio face. And so this was a good thing. This, this helped my cause. I'm telling you that right now. But I do want you to know, she had to relinquish that relationship that God was really dealing with her on in order to get to her big teddy bear. Very important that you understand this. Let me give you a story in my life. Uh, you, we started this church, oh, oh, about 17, 18 years ago. And we, we started it with 18 people. When we came here, we knew nobody, Bruce. We knew nobody. This was a total adventure of faith. Before COVID and all this, we had 2,200-plus active Joy Team members. Uh, slowly, uh, we're regathering. I thank God for that in America, really around the globe. The entire church and the local churches are all rebuilding. They're in really church plant stage. Uh, so many churches are still not open. I talked to a uh, a, a wonderful woman that just moved from Illinois. One of the reasons that she moved here where things are not open where she is. We're seeing more and more people move from California and on and on and on because they want to go where things are open, where you can worship the Lord, where you can gather together. Don't you take that for granted. People are moving from all over to do that. 
A lot of churches still closed. A lot of churches have folded. Most churches have regathered at about 20 to 25 percent nationally. I'm thankful to say that our church is now gathered at about 50 percent, not where we want to be, but thank God we're not where we used to be. Our, our, we've expanded the ministry online. It's, there's uh, thousands of people watch every single week from all over the place. I'm thankful for that, but I will never take for granted in-house, in-person worship. So important. So we moved to start this church uh, about 17, 18 years ago, ago. Knew nobody. Started it with 18 people. We had a wonderful ministry in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'd had it for many years. Things were very comfortable. But God began to drop in our heart this adventure of faith. We could have said no. We could have held on to our little old raggedy teddy bear, and we would have been comfortable for the rest of our lives, making a difference for the Lord. But we decided to let go and relinquish our raggedy little old teddy bear because God had a big teddy bear called you. You people are my big teddy bear. Come on, give me an air hug. Just thank you for the four people that did that. What a blessing. You're my big teddy bear. But had I not given up, we'd have never gone up. See, a lot of times we as believers, we want to go to a setup But you got to give up before you go up, and God won't show you your go up until you give up. But I can promise you, if he's asking you to give up, he's got a big teddy bear behind his back that he wants to get your way. He's helping anybody. I've been talking to you a lot about over the last number of series is about making biblical decisions so that your 2021 can be much better than your 2020, no matter what's going on out there. If we can make better biblical decisions, our life will have much fewer regrets. So let me ask you right off the bat a couple of questions as we launch into this series. I just want you to think of this in your mind. Please don't answer out loud. Question number one, check it out. Have you ever seen a smart person make a dumb decision? Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, that was you coming here today. Come on, tell them. Hey, anybody ever, ever seen a, a smart person make a dumb decision? Well, if you haven't, you're about to. Check it out. Nice and secure. Dude, thanks for coming over today and helping. I gotta clean out the gutters and stuff, and especially all you've been through, man. It's pretty much the first day out of the house since granddaddy died right before my eyes. I'm sorry for your loss, man. I still remember his last words right before he kicked the bucket. Oh yeah? What was his last words? He said, hey, idiot. Are you still holding the ladder? Come on, could I have a little better response from that video? Smart person making a dumb decision. I've seen it, you've seen it over and over and over again. Let me ask you a second teddy bear question because this is going to lead into our thought process. Check it out. How can people be so smart in certain areas, but so dumb in others? Anybody ever see that before? Again, let me take the pressure off you and let me put it on me. Uh, I'm an author. I just finished writing my eighth book. Uh, Oh, uh, thank you. That eighth book will be coming out probably sometime in December. Very excited about it. Uh, I've got the entire book of Ephesians memorized. I have a great command of the Greek language in which the New Testament was originally written in. I can say baklava. (laughs) I'm not a dumb man, but I'm going to tell you right now, when it comes to auto mechanics, I don't have a clue. I really don't. I'm a smart man, but in that area, don't have a clue. I can find the tire. I can find the steering wheel, and that's about it. My son, and my son, he's 18 years old. He's right now working with the kids. I have no idea, but he loves cars, knows about cars. I have no idea where he got that from because it wasn't from me and it wasn't from her. And I'm going to have a talk with my mailman. (laughs) 
You people are too holy to get me. You're too holy. I can tell you, tell you right now. So I don't know where he gets it, but I, man, I, I got smarts in some areas, but over here in that area, man, don't, don't have a clue. Isn't it amazing that we can see that so readily when it comes to other people? Aren't we very discerning when we can see people making dumb decisions and heading down the wrong direction? We're so easy to spot them doing it. But when it comes to us, it's like, whoa, say what? I'm, I know what I'm doing. And it's real easy for us to spot that on the other end. And I've seen that over and over and over again. As your pastor, my goal in life is not to follow you home and have you make good decisions. My goal is to teach you the Word of God, and you need a pastor. You need a pastor. My, my goal is to teach you the Word of God, and then you've got to do what you've got to do. You, 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 that's, I, I get that. But, but I've watched people over the years. You know, some people, they'll invite me. They'll say, now, pastor, they'll say, if, if, if you see me messing up, if you see me really going outside the Bible, man, I give you a voice in my life. Just talk to me and, and let me know that if I'm messing up. If you see me heading off a, a, a wrong cliff, let me know. And, and I appreciate that, but I'm always a little bit hesitant about that. And the reason that I am is because if you invite me, I might take you up on it. And I've taken a few folks up on it, and I'm like, hey, dude, you're about to fall off a cliff. And they're like, shut up, Pastor. You don't know nothing. All of a sudden, things change because how many know a lot of times we don't want to tell ourselves the truth? We want to sell ourselves the truth, and we want to do what we want to do. And the problem with always doing what you want to do is you might end up somewhere you don't want to be. Let me give you a true story. There, a pastor, if I mentioned his name, many of you would know him, a very famous pastor. has a ginormous church of about 22,000. He, he's older than I am, which is amazing. And, and, and he's a father in the faith like I am. And he's, and he's got a, he's got a, he had a couple of, a pastor and his wife that had a, a large church, about 800 folks. And they invited him in to their life to be a father in the faith and to mentor them. They were struggling financially. The church had been struggling financially for years. I mean, just for years. Could not seem to make a breakthrough financially. Always struggling financially. So they brought in this father in the faith whose ministry was thriving and the church was very, very large. And they asked for his counsel and advice as a father in the faith. And both the pastor and his wife had the highest level Beamer, uh, uh, you know, BMW, uh, whatever that is, a 740. Again, I don't know nothing about cars, but the highest level Beamer, they both had the highest level Beamer you could, you could possibly have. Now, please, don't, don't, don't hear me wrong. Whatever you want to drive is whatever you want to drive. That's not my business. If you're a doctor or a lawyer or whatever, and you, get, you got the finances for it and all that. Have at it. Do what you need to do. Hallelujah. But remember now, this church was struggling financially. And there was a disconnect. Why are we always struggling financially? But hey, pastor, and hey, pastor's wife, you have the highest level beamer. Listen, before you judge me, I've got a 21-year-old forerunner. I do. I have a 21-year-old forerunner. It's, it's, it's John the Baptist is his name. Come on, he was a forerunner. Come on, work with me, people. Get a say something. But here's the key. My 21-year-old my forerunner has 73,500 miles on it. True story. That's a true story. I'm going to drive that sucker till the Antichrist comes, and then I'm going to give it to him, and then it's going to break down in his face. Is there anybody out there? So don't be judging me. But you, again, I'm not picking on, that's not the issue. What you drive is not the issue. That's not the issue. What is the issue is if your church is struggling, and you're putting all of this in your people's face, there's a major disconnect. Are you, are you with me on that? And so this pastor told his son and daughter in the faith, hey, dudes, you need to sell those cars and scale down and be an example to your flock. And all of a sudden they said, nope, you're not our spiritual father anymore. <laughs> That's exactly right. They absolutely said, nope, don't want you as a spiritual father because they just wanted to do what they wanted to do. They wanted to hear what they wanted to hear. And I'm going to tell you, I've seen it over and over and over again.
Let me give you our Bible verse for this particular series, Proverbs 27 and verse 12. Very powerful verse. You, you're going you're gonna, to look. This is going to talk to you. Proverbs 27, verse 12. Check it out. A prudent man. Everybody say prudent. prudent. Now, this is a Hebrew word that means you got common sense. And how many know that common sense has now become uncommon? I mean, when I see common sense nowadays, I'm like, wow, that's amazingly refreshing because it is uncommon to see common sense. How many know God wants us as believers not to be weirdos, but to have common sense? We live in a culture and we live in a society that has lost its collective mind. Have you noticed that? Notice here, a prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, but the simple... The Hebrew literally reads naive or, and I don't mean this crass, but it was what it means, stupid. But the simple pass on and are punished. Now, I want you to see this first in a couple of other translations because it'll bring it out a little bit more clearly. Look at them. Check it out. The prudent sees danger. This is from the NIV and takes refuge. Ever say refuge. And the simple keep going and pay the penalty. That word, refuge in the Hebrew language, literally is implying a scout from an army that's going into an opposing area and sees what's happening with the opposing army, comes back, and as a result of that scout, now they're going to take a defensive posture because of what they see coming. Very powerful. And I want you to see what it says in the Amplified. A prudent, prudent man sees the evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished with suffering. Listen to me very closely. I can do without the suffering. How many understand, ladies and gentlemen, the world is crazy enough, the devil is crazy enough, we will suffer persecution when we stand for the Lord, but there's no reason to suffer for our own stupidity. No sense in shooting ourselves in the foot. Now, I'm going to break this down, this verse down for you as I always do in very palatable, understandable ways. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 3.15 that you need pastors after God's own heart. And here's how to recognize one, because that pastor, the Bible says, will teach you knowledge and understanding. Everybody say knowledge, knowledge. and understanding. So many pastors just give you the knowledge without the understanding. The knowledge is the what to do. If I pointed my finger at you and told you what to do, then I'm not a pastor after God's own heart. I want to tell you what to do and how to do it. How, if, if, if you're got a, how many got a good heart? How many just have a wicked, deceitful heart and you're just in all... Come on, you got a good heart. If you got a good heart in the house, then you want to do what's right. But if I just tell you what to do without how to do it, you're going to leave here frustrated. But if I tell you what to do and how to do it, you'll leave here motivated. So I'm going to break it down in palatable bites so that you can not only know what but how. Let me break this verse down in four simple thoughts all up together. Check it out. In this verse, there are two kinds of people. There's the prudent and then there's the simple. In this verse... There's one set of circumstances. There's danger up ahead. There's evil up ahead. Two people, one set of circumstances. Number three, two different responses. you got the prudent man or the wise man. They see that evil coming and they hide themselves. You've got the simple man or the stupid man and they see that evil coming and they keep on walking. Let me make it simple in everyday language. I'm walking on a railroad track. I see the train a coming. I get my bad self off the track. Let's take it the other way. If I'm simple, if I'm stupid, I see the train a coming. Slow train coming. And I don't get off the track. And if I don't, I'm going to be a flapjack. Mm, yeah. Come on, somebody have church with me just a little bit. People will clap for anything. But it is true. And then number four, check it out, two different outcomes. The man who gets off the track, he hides himself. There's a safety, there's a refuge. The man who stays on the track gets punished, pays the penalty, suffers for shooting himself in his own foot. 
Now, this Bible verse is really powerful because of this life point. This life point will explain it, everything I'm saying. Check it out. You apply biblical principles or they will apply to you. Yeah. You think I can just ignore this whole verse? You can't. It's one way or the other. You, you, you're either on the track or getting off the track. It's one way or the other. You either apply these biblical principles or they will apply to you, either in a positive or in a negative sense. What do you say we apply it in a positive sense? What do you say, ladies and gentlemen? God has a big teddy bear for you. Let's let go of our little raggedy teddy bear. Right. Now, let me break it down in principles that you can apply. I'm going to give you 14 from one verse, Pastor, from one verse. The good news is not all 14 today, only eight today, all about a 10-second prayer. <laughs> Principle number one, check it out. Wise people believe life is connected. Foolish people believe life is disconnected. I tell you this all the time, but I need you to understand this. People live like life is not connected. It is connected. Everybody say it's connected. Once again, I'm going to tell you a story about me. I put all the pressure on me. It takes all the pressure off of you. About 30 years ago now, I almost died. Those of you who have been coming here for any length of time know this story. I was in the ministry. I was in, you know, think about it. About 30 years ago, I was seven-ish. No, I'm almost 60 now. This is a long time ago, but still... At about 30 years old or so, that's way too young to have cardiovascular challenges. Could barely walk, barely talk, but listen to me. What led to that, I would love to blame it all on the devil, but I can't. I have to blame it all on me because I made decisions and I live my life in a way that I thought as a young minister I was impervious. I can't be harmed. I'm super spirit. But all the time, I was shooting myself in the foot, how I was living my life. I was not taking vacations. I was taking no rest. I was getting very little sleep. I was eating atrociously. I was sucking down caffeine like there was no tomorrow, literally like there was no tomorrow. And I just, I just, I just burning it on both ends and all in the name of the Lord, not understanding that life is connected. And a foolish person doesn't understand. They think, well, that, that, that was me back then. Again, I love God. I had some expertise in some areas, but in that area, man, it was just dumb. I was living life. Life was not connected. And as I've shared with you many a time, if you're in here today and you're a teenager, there is a 30-year-old living on the inside of you, depending on you making the right decisions today because life is connected. If you are a 20-year-old, there is a 40-year-old living on the inside of you that is counting on you to make right decisions today because life is connected. If you are a 40-year-old, there is a 60-year-old. I know I are one now. There is a 60-year-old sitting on the inside of you counting on you to make the right decisions. If Listen to me. If you are a, 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 an 80-year-old, there is Jesus in heaven <laughs> counting on you to make the right decisions. Is anybody out there? This is imperative that we understand this, ladies and gentlemen, because life is connected. And you know what the Bible says, Galatians 6, 7. God is not mocked. Amen. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. God is not mocked. That Greek word mocked means to make mouths at. It's almost like you're chiding God, making fun of God. No, 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 I'm impervious, God. You don't know what you're talking about. Life is not really connected. But God is not mocked. And notice the phrase before God is not mocked. Do not be deceived. Do not be planao in the Greek. Do not be deluded. And so many times we live a deluded, deceived life because we don't live life like it is connected. Life is connected. Come on, if you want that big teddy bear, you got to understand that. A wise man foresees evil coming and hides himself. A simple man keeps on going and 
is punished. Look at principle number two. Wise people believe the decisions you make today directly affect your tomorrow. Again, this goes hand in hand. My decisions, the ones that I'm making today, will directly affect my tomorrow. I remember the time I was walking in the sanctuary. No one was here. It was during the week, just praying, spending time uh, with God. And God began to speak to my heart very clearly. We have a beautiful thing that goes on at this church. We have the most multicultural church in Wilson County. Can you give God thanks for that? I say all the time. If you're prejudiced and you want to get free, this is a great place to be. But if you're prejudiced and you don't want to get free, don't let the door hit you on the way out. So we are not going to allow you to spoil something that God is doing. And I thank God. And I was thanking God for that. I was just talking to God. Father, I just want to thank you. What a privilege and honor it is to pastor a multicultural community. Most churches, if we're honest, are either all white or all black or all brown. This church has a very common theme. We're all ugly. Come on, and, and if you're a good-looking person in the house, which there's not many of you, you're just ruining it. <laughs> oh, come on. That, normally, people follow after the pastor. Ugly pastor, ugly people. This is how it goes. So I do want you to understand, I was just thanking God for that. Oh, thank you, Father, for that. Thank you. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God spoke to me on the inside. Not these ears, but very clearly on the inside of me. And he told me very clearly, the reason that you have a multicultural church today is because when you first started ministry, I did this in my, when I was in my 20s, when I first began ministry, I began it where I was really the only Caucasian going down to government housing and ministering where it was all African American. I was the only, I know exactly how it means to be a minority, and I was the only person that was willing to do that. Most everybody else was scared to do that or didn't want to do that or didn't bother to do that. There are times where I did that all by myself and literally had the privilege of leading me and my teams hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people to the Lord. Yeah. Hundreds. This is, and this is, this is not for pay. This is all because I love Jesus, and this is because, all because I love people, and my heart was, I got to build a bridge, I got to meet somebody, I got to talk to someone that doesn't look, to, that doesn't look like me, I want to I wanna, I wanna break a barrier. Very few people are willing to do that, and listen to me very closely, I believe that God showed me that very clearly, that this is interconnected. Had I not been willing to do that then, we would not be enjoying what we have now. Life is connected. Wise people believe the decisions you make today will directly affect your tomorrow. Third principle that you need to understand is wise people believe the present eventually becomes the past and then shows up in the future. Now, I don't know that makes you think a little bit, but how many understand that everybody's today will eventually become tomorrow? In other words, your today will eventually show up in your past, but then eventually it'll come out in your future. In other words, the decisions that I'm making today will then end up in my past, but then out of that decision-making, my character is made, and I'll begin to drag that into my future, whether that is good or bad. That's why it's so important the decisions I'm making today fold into my character. Initially, my character chooses my choices, but eventually my choices will choose my character. So I'm making you all think too much. Don't, 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 don't overtax yourself. We can go back and say, right <laughs> Number four, check it out. Luat. Foolish people believe that today's decisions won't affect my tomorrow. They say, it will all work out okay. I am the exception. How many have ever heard that? How many have ever thought that? Man, we've all been there. No, 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 no. That's foolish people. So I, I can keep walking on this track. Nothing's going to happen to me. No, no, I, that, that, tra that, train, that train is just an imaginary train. It's just not coming down the track. No, 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 I'm, I'm fine. Everything's fine. Everything's good. Everything's fine. I'm the exception. I'm stronger than that. I'm better than that. I know what happened to them, but it's not going to happen to me. See, we're not telling ourselves, we're selling ourselves. Fifth thing that we need to understand is foolish people see what they're looking for and hear what they're 
listening for. And isn't it true? How many know so many times if we're looking for something hard enough, we seem to find it? Yeah, I, my, I tell you about this all the time. Everybody here, any, watch the Bigfoot shows? I love the Bigfoot shows because they're so funny. Uh, they're just hilarious to me. I love people. And how many know everything, everything to the Bigfoot people is Bigfoot? You, you, cause why? Why? Because I'm looking so hard for Bigfoot. So I can tell by your response. Some of you think, Bigfoot's real. I can tell. And unicorns are, and mermaids. And Area 53, that's all real. Well, I lost you on that Lazarus level. Maybe you're part of the conspiracy, preacher. Easy, easy. <laughs> Foolish people see what they're looking for and hear what they're listening for. Those Bigfoot people, they go out in the woods, and every knock is Bigfoot. Every, you ever see those things? I say this all the time. You know, they, they show this thing where they do like a, 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 a thing of the trees and the leaves, and they, they take a still photo, and, the, and, you, and if you look at it real hard, you can see, if you look at that real hard, you can see Bigfoot's face. And then you're looking at it, and you're looking at the leaves and all this, and, I, and, I, and this is what I say. I, I see leaves of green. <laughs> Red roses, too. I don't see Bigfoot. What's wrong with you? And I think to myself, what a stupid show. Come on. Everybody. So you church people, I can tell you, you're like, mm, well, I never. Well, we can tell. You need to cheer up. You need to cheer up. In this country, in this time, in this period, we need to have a merry heart. You need to laugh a little bit. You don't need to be so politically correct. You need, you need to have a merry heart. It does good like a medicine. Number six, and this goes hand in hand with everything I'm saying, confirmation bias is the tendency to look for information you already believe. We get our, in our own echo chamber, and we just bounce it off one another. It just gets bigger and bigger and weirder and weirder. Number seven is also true. When we're messing up, and I've, said, I've been talking about this so much, when we're messing up, we tend to run to permission and not correction. You know it's true. You know, listen, to, when, when I'm messing up, I, I want to I, I run to someone that will tell me, you're okay, everything's okay, we're all going to be okay. Here's a trophy for your participation. <laughs> but this life point really is true, folks. You know it's true. Check it out. There's always someone on life's morality ladder sitting on the rung below you. They're always down here going, come on down, it's okay, it's all right, come on, we're, we're all miserable down here, but we want you to join us because misery loves company. When I'm messing up, I tend to run to permission, people that'll tell me it's all right, but that's the dumbest thing we can do. When we're messing up, it's hard to do, but I need to run to somebody that'll tell me the truth. And when they do tell you the truth, receive it. Galatians chapter 4 and verse, seven, or verse uh, 17, Paul says, he writes to the Galatians, he says, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Sometimes people, we can get mad at people because they tell us the truth because we want to do what we want to do. And you know, listen to me, listen to me very closely. If God is dealing with you right now in some sort of a relationship that, hey, son, hey, daughter, I want you to give this thing up. God is not trying to take something from you. If, he, if he's trying to have you get rid of some little habit or some little compromise or some little uh, relationship, he's not trying to take something from you. He's trying to get a big teddy bear to you. But you can't just run to permission. You've got to run to correction even if you don't want to hear it. That's the wisest thing that you could do. It's a hard thing to do, but it's the wisest thing that you can do. Oh, that's imperative. And that, listen, listen to me. If all, if all, and, that, and that's why you don't need to get upset if all of a sudden somebody leaves your life, if someone breaks up with you. And that, you know, if you're single, people, it's like all of a sudden someone dumps you and you take it like, oh, man. No, no, don't, don't cry about it. Here's what you need to do. Freak out the person that dumped you. Go, you're dumping me? Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> that's going to freak you. What do you mean it's awesome? It's awesome. 
I don't need you anyway, you raggedy old little teddy bear. God's got a big old teddy bear behind his back that's coming my way. And why should I get down or why should I get gloomy about you dumping me? I can't wait to see my big old teddy bear. And all of a sudden, ladies, you got some guy. Remember the bear? Bear necessities are simple. Bear necessities. Remember that guy? Come on, anybody? Uh, what's the Jungle Book? Thank you very much, honey. Thank you. You millennials, Google Jungle Book and bear necessities. Make sure you spell it, spell it right. Or you'll get in trouble online. I can tell you that right now. You're getting that. Some of you are getting that. You got to be careful what you Google. That's true. I'm, 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 perfect example. I'll give you a perfect example. I'm a shark fisherman, and there's a, a tool in the shark fisherman thing that you, you got a thing that's about this long, so you can stay far away from the, the teeth of the shark, and it's called a D hooker. So you're ahead of me. You're, a, you're ahead of me. You're ahead of me. So I Googled D, D hooker, to, you know, so I could buy a D hooker, D, D hooker, and what came up was prostitution. True, and I'm mean, gonna no pictures and all like that, but the, that's what the sentences came up. I'm like, beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Jump right out of day. So, how many know you gotta be cautious what you Google in today's day and age? Oh man, that's a true story, that's a true story. <laughs> when we're messing up, we tend to run to permission and not correction. Listen, not everybody, not everybody, it's okay if all of a sudden there's someone leaves your life. Not everybody's supposed to go to your destination. Don't, 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 you, don't, you, don't you remember Naomi and Ruth? Ruth was supposed to be with Naomi. She said, Naomi, I'm not leaving you for nothing. But Orpah, remember Orpah was the other sister-in-law? She said, she said or daughter-in-law, she said, no, I, I'm not, I gotta leave. I'm not supposed to be with you. I'm Orpah. I've got a, I've got a television show I've yeah. got to get to. <laughs> Matter of fact, all of you right now, look under your chairs. There's things for you and you and you. Right now, there's people in Hong Kong going, oh. Not everybody's supposed to be on your bus. And why are you committing long-term emotions to a short-term relationship? It's good wisdom. Number eight, and this is the good news, we're finishing with this. Wise people are willing to acknowledge the very thing that they don't want to see. Listen, if you're on a train track, you don't want to see a train coming your way. But the wisest thing that you can do is go, gee, I acknowledge train on the track coming my way. Right. Right. I got to get off. I can't just keep going and not expect to be punished. Life is connected, folks. But here's the key, and I'm going to keep reiterating it over and over and over again. God is not about taking that little old raggedy teddy bear from you. He is such a good God, and he has your best interest in mind, and he sees the end from the beginning. He doesn't just see the float that's in front of you. He sees the whole parade. He knows what you need, and so I want you to understand he's not trying to take that thing from you. He's trying to get that big old beautiful teddy bear to you. I can tell you right now, I'm so glad I gave up my little old raggedy teddy bear to find all of you. Amen. And it was a journey of faith. He didn't, sh he didn't show me any of this. He didn't, he didn't show me uh, thousands of people. He didn't show me all of the beautiful campus that's debt free. He didn't show me any of that. He just let me know, son, if you'll just let go of that. But just like that girl, that little girl on the meme that we originally showed you, how many times do we go, but God, I love that. I can't. I've had this raggedy old thing for forever. Uh -huh. I, I keep going back to my stupid old boyfriend for six years in a row, even though he mistreats me and treats me like dirt right. and abuses me mentally all the time. I love him. 
Let that raggedy old thing go. And let God pull out his big teddy bear for you. Now, I know what you're thinking, Pastor. Okay, I, I got it. Give me the 10 second prayer that's going to change my life forever. I will next Sunday. <laughs> Would you bow your head with me, please? Would you close your eyes? Would you be so kind, please? Nobody moving or looking around. Unless you've got a ministry assignment, let me talk to your heart for just a moment. I've been talking to you for 40 minutes about making great decisions. But the best decision that you can ever make is that for Jesus Christ. If you're here today or watching online and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, or if you died tonight and you are unsure where you'd spend eternity, heaven or hell, you honestly do not know. The greatest thing that you could ever do, the greatest decision that you could ever make, is to say, Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord. Now, I'm not talking about finding religion, and I'm not talking about joining this church. I am talking to you about entering into a life-giving, life-changing relationship with God the Father through his one son, the Lord Jesus Christ. I did that 40 years ago as an alcoholic checking IDs at a bar, and he radically changed me from the inside out. Jesus called it in John chapter 3, being born again. The media has made that phrase into some sort of a nasty thing, but man, Jesus was the one that coined that phrase, being born again again and he's not talking about going back in your mother's womb he's talking about having a change in your nature from the inside out where God doesn't just come on you he begins to live on the inside of you and lives through you it's a relationship now how do I enter into that relationship well, I'm glad you said something it's pretty simple you simply repent of your sin that does not mean that you clean up and come to God. You don't have, I don't have the power to do that. As an alcoholic checking IDs at a bar 40 years ago, I couldn't clean myself up. I was addicted to almost everything. And I couldn't get out of any of the bondages. I needed a nature change. And that only comes by grace through faith. So you repent of your sin. That means you turn from your sin and now you take that trust that you are placing in your way in doing your thing and you take that trust and place it in what Jesus Christ has done for you what did he do came to this earth died for your sins and mine went down into the heart of the earth Matthew 12 40 was raised again by the Spirit of the Living God and now Romans 8 34 he's at the right hand of the Father waiting to introduce you to him he said, I didn't say it in John chapter 14 and verse 6, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and no man gets to the Father but through Jesus Christ. I didn't say it, he said it. Pastor, that's got a narrow-minded saying he's the only way. No, 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 it's not narrow-minded when, when we say he's the only way because he said he's the only way. Why is he the only way? Because he is the only one that came from heaven to earth and died for my sins and yours, the only one that was raised from the dead, and he's the only one at the right hand of the Father. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 5, he's the go-between between God and man. If you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, or if you died tonight and you don't know where you'd spend eternity, heaven or hell, I'm going to lead everybody into prayer, in-house, online. I'm going to ask that everybody pray it out loud so that you don't feel, that people around you don't feel uncomfortable. But here's the key. Mean it from your heart. If God is tugging at your heart right now, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, or if you die tonight, you don't know where you spend eternity, man, respond to this because today is the day of salvation. Let's all pray. Let's all pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you right now. Sin, I turn my back on you. 
Jesus Christ, I turn to you. And I believe that you died just for me. I believe you took my sins on the cross. I believe that you were raised from the dead just for me. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. I yield my life to you. And I begin a brand new relationship with you. And I do it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, please listen to me closely. If you prayed that prayer in-house, it's so important that you do this. This is my youth pastor. You met him earlier. Tremendous man of God, such a gentle soul. He'll be waiting right outside these middle foyer doors immediately after service. If you prayed that prayer, you never made Jesus the Lord of your life, or if you died tonight, you're not sure before you prayed that prayer and you meant that from your heart, man, listen to me. Here's what I need you to do. Go directly to him right after the service. He'll be waiting for you right out here. Won't take but a few minutes. He wants to pray with you and he wants to give you a gift that will help you walk out your new relationship with Jesus Christ. So important that you do that. We have people that did that uh, last week, and we have people that did gave their lives to the Lord. It happens all the time. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. This is a life-changing, life-giving decision that you just made. Go directly to Him right after the service online. Thousands of you watch, and if you prayed that prayer, there are instructions for you on the screen right now. If you'll follow them, the same gift that we're giving to the folks in-house we want to give to you as our blessing. This is not to jump into your life or into your face, but it's to help you walk out that new relationship with Jesus Christ long and strong. Did you get anything out of this today that's helped you today? Come on. Man, get ready for some big teddy bears. Say it with me as Pastor Eric closes out our service. Say it like you mean it. God loves me as if I am the only person in this world to love.